how the Olas can, can handle such a powerhouse team like Humber. Humber's been around in this league a long time. They have nine championships coming into this. I mean, by all standards, you would look at this game and you'd think it would be a lopsided match, but this whole day has been a lot of exciting volleyball when you get to this level. Yeah, you're right, Sean. Uh, I, I, there's no doubt that Humber is the heavy favorite. We look, first of all, here at the Loyalist bench from Belleville, Ontario, the Loyalist Lancers. They finished 11-7 this season and defeated the Mohawk Mountaineers in the crossover game to get to this tournament. We're looking there at the coach of the Humber Hawks, Chris Wilkins, as the Hawks go to the floor. They are the number one seed in this tournament, 18-0. And it's going to be really tough to unseat them, I think. Well, you got players like O'Connor, who's a top scorer in the OCAA West. You got Golding, who's Rookie of the Year. And then you have your second Team West All-Star in Gabby Militich. I mean, like, you're talking a powerhouse team. There's your starters for, first of all, the Loyalist uh, Lancers. Their big star, number one, Sarah Piana Yafu, top scorer in the OCAAs. Loyalist coach. We have a couple coaches, Dominique Dawes in her 10th year, and she's assisted by Amy Hoskin in her 7th year. Dominic in the number one seat on your left. Now the Humber starting lineup. Number one, Gabby Militech is the center. Brianna Golding, rookie of the year. Devin O'Connor, their top scorer. Those are the key names in that starting lineup. And their coach, we mentioned a couple minutes ago, Chris Wilkins in his 20th year with the Humber Hawks. They are nine-time defending champions, and they're going to be, as we said, tough to unseat. He's well over 300 wins for a career. Great coach, Chris. He's had a very successful career with the Hawks. All right. Looks like we're getting close to starting this matchup. We'll see what unfolds here at the St. Clair College Athletic Complex this evening in this third match in this tournament, the OCAA Championships for 2017. Back to serve for the Humber Hawks. Number 11, the Rookie of the Year in the OCAA. Brianna Bryn Spence Coleman. I'm sorry, it's not the rookie of the year. It's Brianna Golding. Number 10 is the rookie of the year. Sorry for that mistake. And here we go. Bad pass to start for the Lancers. Roll shot handled easily by the Humber Hawks. Bad hit out of the right side. Net touch violation. Actually, that ball hit the antenna uh, coming around on that slide attack. I mean, that came in pretty fast. Number two, serving for the Loyalist Lancers. That's Raven Miracle. That's two errors back to back, Dave. Uh, Humber coming up pretty uh, cold right now. Yep, they go to Devin O'Connor, their go-to player, number 12, first team OCAA All-Star. She hits it into the net. Uh, rough, uneven start for the Hawks. Militech handles the bad pass. Loyalist looking Chris to start the game. The roll shot works. Humber Hawks look a little confused to start, don't they, Sean? Yeah, they're kind of like uh, shell-shocked here. Loyal not really doing much to get started, I mean, other than they ran that right side slide there with Alicia Osborne. Three nothing, Miracle to serve again. Handled by Wilkins, the libero. Right there, number 13 for the Hawks. Seemed like a nice easy shot, roll shot right deep, hitting that line. Allie Newman, fifth year starter, veteran out of Kitchener, Ontario. Hawks trailing three to one. That shot is wide by the offensive star for the Loyalist Lancers. That's Sarah Piana Yafu. She was the OCAA East scoring champion and first team all-star. We expect them to call her name a lot today. Yeah, she better not be making more of those errors or they're gonna be in trouble. They serve to her. That might be a strategy on the part of the Hawks. Roll shot by the Lancers, not successful. There's Golding, missing wide. She was the OCAA Rookie of the Year, Sean, and first team All-Star. Great start for that first year player. Right now, both these teams seem a little bit cold coming into this. Uh, it's a lot of errors, unforced ones. Well, they've been sitting around all day watching some pretty good volleyball. 
expected a little bit of butterflies in the first match of the tournament and uh, a little bit of anxiousness. Seems like there's gonna be a delay here and they're looking for, second officials looking for a towel, I think, just to clean up the floor, I believe. A little bit of confusion behind the Humber bench. Coach Wilkins uh, giving instructions to somebody. Hopefully it's not the official. That won't go too far. Oh yeah, they're just gonna clean up the floor here. The Loyalist Lancers uh, are certainly strong underdogs here in this match, aren't they, Sean? Well, I mean, a Humber, uh, they've they've had nine championships. I mean, they just they just breathe championship. Back to serve, number four, Hannah Dossett out of Kingston, Ontario. For the Lancers, handled well by the Hawks. Devin O'Connor. Oh my, Dave, Four Devin O'Connor. From Milton, Ontario, six feet tall. I mean, watch her coming in right here. They pull the block over on that fake slide, pushes it over, and that ball just went right down the line. Strong hit by O'Connor. We should be calling her name out quite a bit this afternoon. Or this evening now. I guess we're into the evening hours after 6 o'clock. Glad you can join us here on we-tv.ca for this exciting OCAA volleyball action. O'Connor with a smart hit there. Wipes it off the block. Shows a lot of maturity with that shot, didn't she, Sean? Yeah, our sport came up pretty soft on that block, almost like putting up two by fours. You can see this in the replay. The set goes outside to the left. She's about a foot off the net. Not going to get much of a block with that. Might mention the second team all-star setter for the Hawks is a Windsor native, Gabby Militech. Yeah, and there you go. That's what you want to see from Serapiana Yafu. Just big shot like that. And uh, got uh, the team pretty excited there with the Lancers. Average five points per set this year, Sean. That's uh, pretty high. <laughs> so we, ex we would think that, we, although we, you and I haven't seen the Lancers this year, I expect a lot of the offense to run through her. I also expect the Hawks to work her hard in the back row. Yeah, that's up to wear her own. That was a big heads up play from uh, Kyla Wilkins. Letting that ball go out of bounds. I mean, she was running backwards there like a pop-up. Coach's, no. coach's daughter there, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, no one helping her out there. O'Connor back to serve. The offensive leader for the Hawks. Handle well. Outside the piano, Yafu. She has a hard time handling that set. Militech goes back row to O'Connor. Handled again by the, the Wallace Lancers. And number 14. That is Alicia Orsborn. Orsborn. I almost said Osborne. They sneak yeah. an iron there. Orsborn. <laughs> Sneaky. Just like that attack there, dropping that ball in with a rolly. First year player out of Belleville, Ontario. Local. Going to her local community college. Golding. Strong hit from the right side. Picked up by the libero, number six, Jody Mitchell. Golding again. Oh, my. Wow. That was just a cross-court snap. What a great shot that was. Watch this. Free ball, pretty much. Sets it right up there. Nice high shot. Nothing special cross-court across her body. First-year player, rookie of the year. First-team OCAA All-Star. Brianna Golding. Little attack. Whew. Wiped off the block. Allie Newman from Kitchener, Ontario, another five-year veteran. Pretty much Gabby Militich can set wherever she wants. This is just a, a, an arsenal. It's quite a loss for the Windsor volleyball community when Gabby went up to Humber. She played for the Lancers for a couple of years after a great career at St. Joseph's High School in Windsor, Ontario. Serpiano Yafu went all the way around through there and only scored once. They're going to need to get her more sets if uh, they're going to have a chance here. Well, I will expect they go on the back row tour as well, won't they, Sean? Of course, yeah. That's blocked by the Lancers. Back row again. O'Connor. Wow, heads up, Blake. Number nine, Emily Lenovo. Another Belleville, Ontario product. She had not much of an option here. I mean, the ball came in. Set came up and she just kind of two stepped it. Back to live action. Golding has to give up a free ball. There they go to Yafu. And that scores. Wow, she's pretty excited there. I mean, that was a pretty heads up shot. She wasn't really there in time with the attack, but she hit the sideline. Miracle, the setter for uh, the Lancers, distributing the ball well, isn't she, Sean? Yeah, she is. She's going all over the place here. 
Back again to number 13. That could be a chink Newman. in their armor, Dave, is the, the blocking. It's a little sloppy, it's a little off the net, and uh, you gotta be able to press into Humber's uh, zone. Well, they're also a little undersized, aren't they, compared yeah. to Humber? So we'll see how that plays out as this match wears on. Number four, Hannah Dossett with that hit. They go to Golding in the back row, off, speed hit, and that works. Came off her hand at a very weird angle. Yeah, Raven Miracle didn't really know what to do with it. She was kind of flat-footed, but I mean, anybody in that situation would be, it was kind of a weird little side shot. Kind of fooled Alicia Orsborne there. But, Golden goes back, puts that serve into the net. Now, if Loyolas can actually get Yafu into this game, I mean, they could do some damage here. I mean, they are right with Humber here. They're hanging with them, they're up 10-9. Fortunate pass there for the Hawks. They go back row to Yafu. She hits it down the middle. That doesn't work. Scrambling here. Back to Yafu again. A lot of height. She really arches that back when she wow. swings, doesn't she? Yeah. Militech <laughs> says, I'll take it on two. And that catches Loyola, the Loyalist, sorry, Lancers by surprise, and there's a net violation on the block. That's unfortunate, too, because uh, that ball was dug. 10-10. Both teams kind of feeling them, each other out here. Kind of punch-counterpunch going on. Good block in the middle by the Hawks. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Just wide. She seems to like to hit that shot to that number four position on defense. If you go watch her here on the replay, I mean, just great. Finesse here on the attack, right up here, nice high reach, big snap. Just missed. Service into the net. The Hawks seem to be showing more butterflies than uh, the Lancers, uh, but you know, not too unexpected. I think most of the pressure is on them to perform well. The Lancers, I think most people would have low expectations for them. And they're playing free and easy, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you can tell the Royals here are having a lot of fun out here. Humber seems a little bit more concerned. Well, it's, it's, after all, it's a game, isn't it? Might yeah. Well have fun. Good serve again. Miracle with the serve. Number 13, Allie Newman. She's been uh, the offensive star so far for the Hawks. Yeah, she made some lemonade there. There wasn't much there in the set. She rolled it over. See if the Hawks can make a run. And the well. Great hit there, Christine Madago, first year player out of Ottawa, Ontario, with a smart hit out of the middle. Good pass to start it off. Miracle makes a nice, nice high set. Madago right over the block and to the one position on the floor, nobody home. When you come across your body like that in the middle, that's a great shot. Long serve. That's unfortunate. You work all that to get that ball and then you just blow it out the back door. So it's nip and tuck so far, Sean, 13-13. Militech back to serve. I'm sure Gabby's parents are in the, the crowd. Big volleyball enthusiasts. Hey, that looked like a carbon copy of a couple points ago. Yeah, I can see uh, some strategy here as she comes over through the middle. Christine Madago jumps right up there, two footer, right back to the one. Well, we could run those two replays and we think we've seen the same shot over and over again. Carbon copies. Elizabeth Deacon Poop, third year player from Georgetown. Heads up play. That ball should have been dug, though. I mean, it was right in front of Miracle. It's hard to get setters to play that defense because they're running in to get that set. Well, they're thinking set, and I often forget to play defense. I've been guilty of that many, many times. Poor pass by the Lancers. Good defense, scrambling. Oh, oh. Two. boy. Piano Yafu swinging hard. It's number 14. That's Alicia Orsburn. Just having, player. just having her out there is uh, an option. I mean, there's She's a replay going by back. And not able to handle it. But what they're doing on defense is isolating it out on Yahoo, so you'll be able to get those isolation shots. Yeah, well, Connor probably should have handled that in the back row. Wasn't able to. She tried to with her fingers. Golding. No answer for her. That is a quick set coming out of that right side. 
When Humber was here uh, a couple of weeks ago to play the St. Clair Saints, I don't think she played much, did she, uh, Sean? No, they had, they had a lot coming on the bench. She she came off the bench though that day, didn't yes. she? Yeah. And looks like she's earned herself a spot on the on the starting lineup for this tournament. Roll shot doesn't work. Militech picks it up easily. O'Connor with the back row attack. Lancers are going to have to give up a free ball. Handled by Deacon Poot. Golding can't reach that set a little too high. That set a little tight to the net. She's more concerned about the net violation and uh, put that ball a little too high for that attack. Well, the Loyalist Lancers continue to hang here with the Humber Hawks. They lead 16-15, and you can see them gaining in confidence with every point. Free ball coming here from Wilkins. Mitchell handles it to the middle. What we're seeing, Dave, is an unorthodox style of play, and Humber's more of an in-system style of play. And when you get these mismatches, you can have games just like this. Yes, Lenovo finds the hole with the tip, 17-15. Humber needs to realize that they're in a slugfest right now, because right now, Loyalists are taking it to them. Well, Humber's playing the power game, and Loyalists is playing the finesse game, and so far, it's been a pretty even match. Golding to serve. Nice pass by Mitchell, the libero. Oh, my. There's our first year right side hitter, Emily Lenovo. Watch Lenovo. I mean, the set goes right out to her. She has two blockers there, and she just finds a way to go big cross. Great hit by the first year player from Belleville. There's the answer. Number 11. And that's the one thing that I can say that Loyals is not doing really well is, is keeping that block tight and being able to penetrate into the zone of There's Humber. Years. But they're doing everything else yep. just great. Bryn Spence Coleman back to serve. Just scored that on that winning shot. Madago with the roll. Handled by Wilkins, but not well. They're just picking apart Humber's defense, putting in Rolly's deep corners. These two teams trading shots. 1917 Loyalist. Wilkins handles the serve. Outside to Devin O'Connor. It's dug up. They're going to have to give a free ball. Mitchell with the barrel. Oh, there's a step oh. down. No handle. Loyalist gets it back. Devin O'Connor. Another day. Wow. Boy, the Lancers are all over the floor picking up everything that the Hawks can send their way. Miracle goes backcourt to Yafu, and she swings long. Boy, they really forced that play. I mean, they, they were playing so well, just playing uh, playing the wall, basically, on defense. They forced that to Yafu, and that's what happened. Yeah, it was an unorthodox set, wasn't it? it uh, bump set over her head to a back row player. Of course, we would have called it brilliant if that <laughs> shot had fallen. Madago. <laughs> Over the block, handled by Militech. Outside here to O'Connor. She makes no mistake. And that's what Humber does. I mean, they, they just, they play their game. They keep going. They're, they're, they're so just, consistent, they're aren't just they? They're just smooth. Yeah, they are. They're consistent. They're big right across the board. That's out. Lines official Mark Eckert on the call. And it's punch for punch, Dave. I mean, there's a lot of unforced errors coming from both teams, but they happen right at the ideal time to keep this game so tight. Our head official today is Mr. Paul Higgins, a local official. Down official Chris Getz, the R2. And then the two lines of persons are the aforementioned Mark Eckert and Kim Rutherford. Yafu doing too much there. All she had to do is just bang it back. She went for the big kill. 2020, and there's the first timeout of this set. It's called by the Loyalist Lancers, Coach Dominique Dawes. I'm going to show you some head to head stats from this season. Humber first in the West, Loyalist fourth in the East. Big difference in the record. Humber, of course, undefeated at 18 and all. Sean, what else do you make for the rest of the, uh, the statistics there? Well, what I can see from the Loyalists is that uh, their big game is going to be that defense, like what we saw a little bit there. I mean, they're a better digs per set. I mean, and they got to translate that into the attack with Yafu. They tried to do it one time there. We saw that fourth shot, and Yafu couldn't do much there. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. Right now, we're seeing an example. Both teams tied at 20-20, and it's just a great matchup here. 
I'm actually caught off a little uh, off guard here because I thought really and truly Humber could come in here and just roll them. But no, Loyalists are playing a really good game, a good strategy. They're an unorthodox play and they're picking apart Humber's defense. Yeah, you can see Coach Wilkins, he's really demonstrative there in the huddle. I think he's ex expected a better start from his Humber Hawks. If Yafu can get into this game and just uh, get rid of those unforced errors, they could, they could take this. Yep, you're right. See the crowd is starting to build there, Sean. Uh, another big game uh, with local interest after this one at 8 o'clock. Our own St. Clair College Saints will be hosting Algonquin in the fourth and final quarterfinal of the day. We hope uh, the local volleyball fans will be out in big numbers to support the Saints. O'Connor powers up through the block. And now she's starting to show her all-star pedigree, isn't she? Yeah, and uh, again, it, it makes it easier when the, the block isn't so tight, and they, and they are a bigger uh, group on the Humber side. Militech to serve. Gabby has certainly been a big, big addition to the Hawks' attack this year. A very accomplished setter. Oh. <laughs> she's got great ups, but sometimes takes some really, really difficult angles with her shots. Well, that's just too, she's trying to do too much there. I mean, with that kind of finesse, she could just bang the pot and still score. 22-20, Humbers crawled out in front. Tough handle by Mitchell. Madago losing a little bit of uh, aggressiveness there, and that cost her. She floats over a free ball. Golding makes no mistake. Yeah, the great shot, long and deep, pushed it to the one. It was just like almost exactly where she wanted to put it. 23-20, suddenly Humber on a run. They were down 20-18. to Five straight points, puts them out in front. Make that six, and now they're on the verge of set point. And that's the thing with Humber, they're just, they stay consistent, they stay smooth, and this is the first time they've actually been able to pull away. Never appear to be rattled, do they? No. Militech again to serve. Set point. That roll shot works again. Finesse. Alicia Orsburn. What Loyola's, they lack in that uh, powerhouse uh, attack, they make up in their volleyball IQ for sure. 21-24, no room for error now. Timeout called. Oh, this is call, weird. The Humber Hawks, uh, kind of an odd time to have a timeout there. But uh, managed to get the officials' attention before the serve. Coach, Coach Wilkins was up and off the bench making the call. Show you the schedule coming up and what has happened so far today. Sean, take it away. Well, Niagara took care of Cambrian 3 to 1, and Durham played a game with Fanshawe. Now, that Durham Fanshawe game was a lot closer than what that score tells you. At any time, Fanshawe felt as though that they could just uh, squeeze that game from Falcons, but Falcons pulled it off right near the end. So, you'll have those two playing each other tomorrow in a semifinal match, and then obviously you have the Loyal Humber. Whoever wins this match will end up playing the winner of the St. Clair Gawkwin game tonight at 8 o'clock. Yeah, I was very, very impressed with the Durham Lords this afternoon. Fanshawe, I thought, played a great up tempo game. And Durham, Durham matched them, didn't they? Gabby Militech uh, on our screen, local product, setter. We talked Humber about Hawks. setters and digs. I mean, you want to see numbers just like that for a setter. That means they want to play that tough D. Yep, she is a great defensive player and a great setter. And there you go, the winning shot by Devin O'Connor. No surprise that they go to her. That might have been called by Coach Wilkins at that timeout. And the Humber Hawks win the first set by a score of 25 to 21. They've watched a good back set by Militech. And O'Connor wipes it off the block of Yafu and down. So, we're going to send you off to commercial now. I hope you're enjoying great OCAA volleyball action on we-tv.ca. express my appreciation for the special opportunity to serve as a keynote speaker for the Westby Awards. 
It's an honor to be associated with an event that brings together the entire sports community of Windsor for one night while supporting so many great local causes. Spending time with all the athletes that help make Windsor such a great sports town is something I am looking forward to. Tickets for the Westby Awards are available at Bob Reum Sports, 4275 Tecumseh Road East, and online at www.thewestbys.ca. Discounted group rates are also available. We'll see everybody in March. Manpower, that's our specialty. We use it to build infrastructure, like the Billion Dollar Parkway. That's real manpower in action. End to end over 1,000 strong, forming bridges, carving out tunnels, shaping roadways. Our manpower is in demand. Well-trained, highly skilled, tough as nails. We've got what it takes to build your career. A solid career for building a better future. Layuna, feel the power. All right, welcome back to the beautiful St. Clair College Athletic Complex in South Windsor, Ontario. You see the result of the first set in this evening match, the OCAA Volleyball Championships, presented by Bel Air Direct. The Humber Hawks defeating the Loyalist Lancers 25-21. Coach Wilkins, still quite demonstrative in the huddle. He's a very intense coach, nine-time defending champions, has high standards, high demands, and you can see the coach for the Loyalist Lancers, Dominique Dawes, exhorting her team. She got a great effort, though, I think, from them in the first set, didn't she? Sure. Yeah, she, I, mean, I mean, they worked around their offense. Um, you had three attacks from Adago, three from Lenovo, and then you had three from Horsborn. What was... Probably not what they expected, but they only had two kills from their number one player, Yafu, who led the OCAA East in scoring, and she only got two kills in that whole game. I mean, yeah. and that game was tight right up to the end. If they could have just figured it out and got that ball to her, they probably would have turned it around. Great point. Humber Hawks doing what is expected of them in that first set. That's a win, and uh, they look like they have a little bit more confidence and bounce to their step as they come out for the second set. They are the heavy, heavy favorite in this matchup tonight. They are the number one seed. They're, I believe, the number two ranked team in the country. If, uh, I'm they're on an 18-0 run. Well, they're 18-0, but there's another 18-0 team in this tournament. We saw them earlier today, the yeah. Durham Lords. Yeah, and they look good. I mean, and, and they had a great game with Fanshawe, though. That was a lot of Not fun. Not only did they look good, they looked big, and defensively they looked really strong, too. So we may see those two teams sometime over the next couple of days go head-to-head. -head. It would be a great match to watch. Raven Miracle, the first-year setter from Deseronto, Ontario. I have no idea where that is, Sean. <laughs> I have no clue. We need Dom back in here. Yeah, we need Dom to uh, give us a little lecture on Ontario geography. Just like the first set started, they go right to Devin O'Connor. She makes no mistake, one nothing Humber. That's Humber bread and butter right there. Pass, right in system, set it outside and let her go to town. Gabby Militech, the Windsor native, back to serve. one nothing Humber early here in the second set. Little miss timing. Militech. Notice how she she does like to play defense, doesn't she? Yeah, and you know what, what was again what we talked about in the first set a little bit more that that unorthodox attack and Humber trying to make lemonade and they just can't execute that that attack. One one. Very very important set right here for Loyalist. That serve is into the net. Number four, Hannah Dossett, second year player from Kingston, Ontario. 2-1 Humber as O'Connor goes back to serve. Fourth year player out of Milton, Ontario. Handled by Mitchell. Wow, Yapu she got goes up there. Up and over the block with the tip. <laughs> O'Connor with the back row attack. Mitchell again. The pass. This time they go weak side or right side to number 14. Back row attack to O'Connor, and she puts it into the middle of the net. Again, we were talking about that unorthodox play, and then they can't seem to transition that unorthodox play when they're out of system like that. The libero first-year player, Jody Mitchell from Oshawa, Ontario, for Loyalist. She's looked impressive so far. Does a lot of the defensive heavy lifting for the Lancers. Back set to Golden. Great shot. Yafu came in late on that block, did her best, but she had that line wide open. Kind of a half swing, and she directed that down the line, didn't she? Yeah, she knew she was putting it there. 
Showing a lot of maturity for a first year player. Golding from Pickering, Ontario. Gafu has to handle that. Golding gives up the free ball. Mitchell right there. Roll shot. Number nine, second year player, Emily Nadevo from Belleville, Ontario, makes Humber pay for that overpass. I mean, you get a ball like this, Dave. I mean, how excited do you get as a middle player? Nice overshot, wide open, no block. She did a good job not putting her hand into the net there, didn't she? Sometimes you get those middle blockers, they get so excited when it's just hanging there, you see more errors than not. Number 14, Alicia Orsburn back to serve, and it goes long. Humber, 4-3, early in the second set. People trickling into the uh, Sportsplex, uh, Sean. Uh, a lot of them anticipating the next match here on we-tv.ca. St. Clair College Saints will be in action. Nice big kill down that right side. That's what they need to do to get her into this game, pick up some of those points, but they got to keep her in the front court. That was Yafu again. She's back to serve. Into the net. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's three points to Humber just on missed serves. serves. You're correct. Three of the five. Number 11, Bryn Spence Coleman serving. And that's oh. an ace. And it looks to me, that was right at the feet of Yafu. Sean, it looks to me like it's a strategy of Humber to serve at Yafu and make her work in the back row. But yeah, you're, if you want to take someone out of their offense, make them play defense first. There they split Mitchell and Yafu. There's that unorthodox shot, Dave. I mean, that's what the Lancers are doing really well, and it seems Humber just can't seem to get their head around it. That was number four, Hannah Dawson. There she is, Sarah Piana Yafu, the top scorer in the OCAA East this year, first team All-Star. And she is expected to carry the brunt of the offensive weight for the Lancers. If she gets a groove on, Humber's in trouble. Number 13, Allie Newman, to serve for Humber. Deacon Spook. Again, there's one of those overpasses that middle hitters salivate for her. And that's, they're isolating out on Yafu here. They're serving it right to her. They figure if she's got a pass, she's not being able to transition in her offense, and that's what happens. Yes, and passing doesn't look to be so far at the strong point of her game, does it? So they may have had a scouting report on that. Militech with the set outside. O'Connor hits that hard, but it's picked up. Back row attack is stopped by the Hawks. The roll shot by Orsburn goes long. 9-5 Hawks, and that elicits a timeout by Coach Dominique Dawes for the Loyalist Lancers. And Sean, let's take a look at the stats after set number one. Well, right there, you got Humber with 14 kills to uh, Loyalist 11. But I mean, you, there's actually, they're really even when you look at this, three errors apiece, the assists are, are there and their digs are one-on-one. -on -one. If you just looked at those stats, you'd say that this game was a tight game. And if you look at the score, that's exactly what it showed. Oh yeah, it was 25-21 Humber. And, uh, if not for a late spurt by Humber, there was really nothing more than a point in it for three quarters of the match. Well, I do know that Humber, what they've done is they've adjusted their blocking. They're going to what they call a bunch block. When Yafu's in the back court, both outside blockers are stepping inside and they're closer to their middle blocker because they're just trying to isolate on Yafu. Yep, good point. As we see Humber break their huddle, looking a lot more comfortable. Looks like they got a bit of their swagger back, don't they? Yeah. Well, Coach looks like he's uh, just walking down the street here, flipping a coin. Coach Business Wilkins as usual. Been around a long time, 20 years, and I, I think I was looking over to see. He's got at least 12 OCAA championships in those 20 years, so he's a very spoiled coach, isn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he doesn't work hard at all. <laughs> There's Yafu. that bunch block. Yep. Yafu gets it to fall, and that's not such a bad strategy. You know, you got that shot. She hits the ball with such force, the whole Humber defense was up close to the net, and she just rolled it over their heads. And That's all they got to do. Miracle with the serve at Wilkins. Difficult set there by Militech. 
Nice back set. The roll shot won't fall. Over to O'Connor. Doesn't fall. Back to O'Connor again. Miracle with a high bump set. A lot of jousting at the net at the moment. They go to Yafu, and this time she makes no mistake. Looks like she's taken a little off those hits, and now they're all of a sudden more effective. Yeah, well, you have the Lancers again throwing over some junk, and, and Humber just can't seem to keep things in system, and uh, they get Yafu open, and that's what happens. Wilkins with the pass to Militech, out to O'Connor. Oh. No mistake there. She leaned into that one, didn't she? Yeah, that's five years of experience right there. Nice set outside, big ups, and just buries it. And again, they're making Yafu work on defense. I don't think anybody could play defense on that shot. No. Good effort, though, down the line to pick it up. It wasn't successful. Miracle to the middle. Madago had a really fast start. Christine Madago in the first set, but uh, seems to have lost a little confidence. Just need a little snap on that wrist, and that ball would have went down. It's just too much elbow bent. Militech to serve. Good pass. Lancers back set to the right side. Militech has to handle it. Goes to Wilkins who makes the bump set. Again, that transition that we're talking about, Dave, when uh, Gabby takes that first ball on that set, then they go into an out of system type strategy and then they make the error. Yep, Golding with the foot fault on that. Loyola serving down 8 11. Golding is blocked. There's going to have to be a free ball given up by the Hawks here. Mariko with the set. She goes to the middle. Madago wipes it off the block. And she got the touch. Slowly, yeah, very slowly. Uh, Loyola crawling back into the set. I think the Lancers are playing a great strategy against Humber. Good pass by Wilkins. Militech. <laughs> that was textbook volleyball there, wasn't it? Oh, baby. I From bump right there, perfect <laughs> to set, even more perfect to hit, even more perfect. Well, when you got Yafu coming in late on the block, swung outside, I think she blocked it outside the antenna. O'Connor, that's a held ball. So every time Loyola seems to get close, Humber just puts their foot on the gas a little bit and crawls away by three, four, five points. Well, O'Connor just putting some big shots there. Oh, and an ace. Mitchell tried to get out of the way. And I think it hit her in the forehead or the back on the way out. There she is, Devin O'Connor. Had a big season this year for the Hawks. Well, yeah, she's been around a long time in this league, and uh, her stats show it. Another big serve. She is pumped. She got three points along the front court, just got two aces. Fourth year player out of Milton, Ontario. She's padding the stats right now. Strong player, too. Another good serve. Mitchell has trouble holding on to it, but Militech playing good defense again. Back row hit to O'Connor. <laughs> she flies through the air. She does fly through the air. And she arches her back at a tremendously huge angle. Watch this as she goes up. She's going to have back problems when she gets older, Sean. Oh, Look at that. Man. Look at the arch on that back. Full snap, <laughs> extended elbow. I mean, that's tech, textbook attack. Seems to me, though, she gets a little too far out in front of the ball. Don't you think? I mean, it's her style. Yeah, it is her style. Unlike Golding there, it keeps the ball more out in front of her. That's more traditional. Exactly. I'm okay with style here. This is a traditional technique shot, right yeah. out front. Yeah, that's not going to put as much strain on the back when you're no. when you're my age. <laughs> She's like, I don't even think in my dreams I could do what Yaflu does with her back. Good swing there. Handled. That's going to be a double contact on the no. side of Miracle. They're calling her a foot violation there underneath the net. 16-11 Humber. Just sort of methodically chewing away, aren't they? Yeah, it's like just chipping away, chipping away. And that's their style. It's been successful. They're looking for their 10th straight OCAA championship this weekend. And I don't think 
there's many people who would bet against them. That was a quick transition there, baby. Nice hit out of the middle by Allie Newman. This is tough, Dave. Like, that shot there in transition, quick shot in the middle. I mean, the block can't even expect it that fast. And you really have to trust your setter on that, don't you, Sean? You do, because you're basically playing the defensive shot, and it's something that you run in practice over and over and over. It just becomes like breathing. You see the crowd now slowly getting larger here. St. Clair College Athletic Complex. Uh, following this match, we have the St. Clair College Saints going up against Algonquin from Ottawa. That should be, that should be a tight one. I'm expecting it to be a, a really tight tight shot there. Oh, yeah, let's there talk we about the Westbys. We'll talk about the Westbys, the 12th Annual Westby Awards coming up, featuring a great keynote guest this year. I, I would love to hear him speak. Joel Kenville, the head coach of the Chicago Blackhawks, on Tuesday, March the 7th, the Kubota Club doors open at 6 o'clock with the award ceremony at 7. You can get your tickets at Bob Ream Sports, or you can get them online at GoWestbys.com. And we we'll hope to see a lot of you there attending the Westby Awards, a great local tradition in our sporting community here in Windsor. 17-11, Humber with a little bit of daylight, probably as much daylight as they've had in this match so far tonight. Deacons Poot with the serve. Again, they're going after Yafu. But that doesn't affect her. Man, that's a real tough shot. When you got a pass, jump back out into the four and then come back in to attack. That's just to show you the kind of player that she is. And she, she made an awkward pass, too. It made it even more difficult. Managed to bury the ball anyway. Alicia Orsborn with the pass, or sorry, with the serve. That and goes long, well, well judged by Wilkins. Those are the types of plays that just drive coaches mad. Well, they're momentum killers, aren't they? And, uh, Right now, Loyalist needs a run, and they need it quickly. It's getting late here in the second set. Golding with the serve. Again, they go after Yafu. Again, she passes, gets in position, makes the kill. If the Lancers can do more of that with that unorthodox play, keeping Humber out of system, and then Yafu can go through there and score three points, they'll be closer. There's the answer. Yeah, Bryn I don't think there was much Coleman. of a block on that. Bryn Spence Coleman with the hit. That brings O'Connor into the front row, and that's not good news no, for it's the not. Los Lancers, is it? Again, they work Yafu. That's definitely by design. Oh. Connor misses, she's calling for a touch, but she missed everything. That's something that drives coaches mad is a shot like that where she went for the hardest shot she could possibly take it as a long line shot. She doesn't have to work that hard. Well, she only had a single block up against her. Poor judgment and shot selection there. Militech, nice dump. And that works. The Lancers scramble but can't handle it and looks like uh, double substitution coming here. Here in the right replay. Here, Militech, smart dump. Well disguised, Lancers can never recover from it. Uh, I mean, really, Militech only had one shot there. The ball was going over the net. Looks like Coach Wilkins giving a couple starters a rest in anticipation of the third set coming up here. He replaces Militech and he replaces Golding. We'll get the uh, substitutes to you in a second. One of them is Celine Blanchett. Your new setter. She came in for Militech. Back row attack by Yappy. Yeah, Fu, sorry. Second time's a charm, though, for the young lady. She's a machine, isn't she? Yeah, well, these girls that just came into the game are definitely going to get some experience here with uh, a player like Yafu banging out of them. The other substitute was number eight, Julia Watson. For the Hawks, both of those young ladies that came in are first-year players, getting some valuable experience there. But not for long. Uh, Golding and Militech coming right back onto the floor. I don't even know. There you see Raven Miracle, the setter for the Loyalist Lancers. Looks like she didn't miss a game with that number of assists. Well, yeah, and if you looked, it, you saw there was 95 digs, and then we saw that stat earlier with Gabby Militich with 235. You can yep. tell the defensive play that she just needs to get yeah, in her game. Okay. Militech serving. 
handled by the Lancers. Good pass there by the Hawks. They go back to Golding. She gets, let me go right back to her again. <laughs> she says thank you very much to her center. A little give and go. That's right. First one block, center goes right back to her. Those sets, or those types of plays usually are worked out on the back of the bus on a long bus ride. So I'll just give it right back to you. Yep. And it's not a bad strategy to give it back to a teammate who's just been blocked. Mitchell handles the serve. The food. Oh, that was Madago with a dump. Holding again. Handled this time. Back to Yafu and the roll shot out of the back row. Wow. They went that difficult set there. Golden can't do much to handle it. The Lancer scrambling on defense. Shoot set to the middle. Deacon's Poot can't get it to fall. Yafu with another roll shot. Wilkins handles it outside to O'Connor. And she's blocked. And boy, that's the most emotion we've seen from the Lancers tonight. Yeah, I mean, they, they worked that point yeah. there. I mean, they set Golding seven times Here's before they ran that shoot. Connor to get two blocks up on her. They turn it inside. Can't, Wilkins can't handle it. Look at the emotion. So they the got an inside shoot in the middle, and then they went to that four outside. Lancers worked hard for that point. Certainly did. Wilkins with a great pass. Back to O'Connor. Wow. She's got great form, does she? The body is so square to the net when she swings. She's equally effective on the right side as she is from the left side. Watch how, how classic right here. What great form. It's on that wrist, Dave, that snap. Yep. What we call it, come across, she wants to go thumb up so she can get that cross. She's back to serve. Bam. That's blocked out. 23-16. Golding thought that ball was down. <laughs> the bench is saying, no, it was down. <laughs> it was called out. There was no hesitation really on the part of the lines person. And she has the best view in the house. Back set to Golding. Yeah. She made up for it on that attack she right there. Humper showing a lot of emotion right now. They're really going heavy on Golding here on that right side. She's probably been set 12 times. Just gets that cross-court shot. She now has six points for the night. O'Connor leads with 10 points. No surprise there. Loyalist scrambling. They have to give up a free ball. O'Connor handles it in the back row. To Militech to the middle. That shoot set works off the defense. Gabby Militich really working. 25-17, Humber wins the second set here tonight in our third of four matches. Let's take a look at that set point, Sean. Yeah, there's the shot from the Lancers. They're going to get that free ball. And then you can see Gabby's calling up a shot right there. She knows it's going to be an inside shoot. There it is, pushed inside. A nice 31, finds the court. So 25-17. The Humber Hawks win the second set. You're watching OCAA Volleyball Action on we-tv.ca. Hello, everyone. Joel Quenneville here. I'd like to express my appreciation for the special opportunity to serve as a keynote speaker for the Westby Awards. It's an honor to be associated with an event that brings together the entire sports community of Windsor for one night while supporting so many great local causes. Spending time with all the athletes that help make Windsor such a great sports town is something I'm looking forward to. Tickets for the Westby Awards are available at Bob Reum Sports, 4275 Tecumseh Road East and online at www.thewestbys.ca. Discounted group rates are also available. We'll see everybody in March. Manpower, that's our specialty. We use it to build infrastructure, like the billion dollar parkway. That's real manpower in action. End to end over 1,000 strong, forming bridges, carving out tunnels, shaping roadways. Our manpower is in demand. Well-trained, highly skilled, tough as nails. We've got what it takes to build your career. A solid career for building a better future. Layuna, feel the power. Welcome back to 
St. Clair College here for the 2017 edition of the OCAA Women's Volleyball Championships presented by Bel Air Direct. Humber leading Loyalist two sets to zero after a very clinical 25-17 set to victory. It looked like a total mismatch in the second half of that second set, didn't it, Chuck? Yeah, you could tell that Humber was uh, just a more um, precise team. More of the stuff that they'd done was just just more precise than, say, with the Loyals. Loyals, is, their strategy is, is get the ball over, throw some junk over, keep Humber out of system, and it was working for them for a while, but now Humber's got their thing together. Yeah, the crowd uh, starting to build a little bit here for the 8 o'clock matchup to follow this one. St. Clair College Saints will play the Algonquin Thunder. I see uh, up in the stands, Sean, uh, some members of the victorious 55 and over Windsor women's volleyball team that just won the gold medal this week at the Ontario Winter Games in Coburg, Ontario. So congratulations to them. And, and uh, how the boys do, Dave? The men, our team uh, unfortunately got bronze. Not quite as shiny as the gold, Sean, but we were very happy with our effort. But congratulations to all those fellas too. My teammates had a great week up in Coburg, Ontario. And just happy to be playing volleyball at our age, really, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, unlike what we just saw right there was some great volleyball from the Lancers. Dropping that ball in. Good start, and they need a good start. They need to sustain it here. They're down two sets to zero. There's no tomorrow if they lose this set. Tall order. They're up against the 18-0 Humber Hawks. Good rally here, and O'Connor coaxes it through the block. She hits a real heavy ball, doesn't she? Yeah, if you're not penetrating onto their zone, watch I watch the space in the block here when they go up. There's just too much space between her and that net. That ball is just, it's, you might as well put up two by fours. Jeez, I love, you can't coach form any better than O'Connor has it. What a dig. Great dig. Is that Militech? No, it was Golding. Yeah. She does it again. O'Connor with the dump. Everybody on the Loyalist Lancer defense back in her heels. What a pretty, pretty shot by Devin O'Connor. Bam. Golding there started with that shot off, and then nice little tip shot will be calling to the pot. Number 13 serving, Allie Newman. Free ball has to be given up by the Lancers. Newman with a good pass. No attack on the net with that set, and she knew it. She did her best, though, to pull that set off. If she would have done it, that would have been crazy because uh, that was a terrible pass for her. Yeah, a little too tight to the net. 2-2. Two, two. And a big break there for the Loyalist Lancers. Number four, Hannah Dossett coaxes that over. Watch this serve. Strong <laughs> all line luck. into the Bam. net and just falls over for the point. Practice. Practice does that, Dave. That clears the net easily. To the middle. Big block there by Christine Madago, first year player out of Ottawa, Ontario. She's really happy. She stuck to her player out of the middle. She knew that's what that what play was. They were talking about it before that serve was. The coach ran out there and got it. Dawson serving again, mishandled by Wilkins, the libero for the Humber Hawks. And big run here right now for the Loyalist Lancers as they are up 5-2 here in the third set. They need to win this set as they are down two sets to zero. Their backs are against the wall. Another Monsters. strong serve. Dave, we call that serving through the envelope. When you can serve that ball from the top of the antenna to the top of the net, it goes right through. You really can't see an angle to get a pass. Number four, Dossett. Another great serve. Handled this time. O'Connor off the block. Loyalist scrambling. But despite all the room at this beautiful complex, they can't bring it back into play. Good try by Mitchell, though. Boy, that Yafu, she can get up there. She, we're talking about a little bit of that soppy block, but she's got a big block pushing it right into Humber's zone. Mitchell, tough handle. They have to give up a free ball, handled easily by Golding. Militech goes out to O'Connor, roll shot. Picked up by Dossett. Yafu with a roll shot of her own. Where does Militech go now? Back to Golding. <laughs> she's got a lot of options, doesn't she? 
pretty much she can set anywhere that she wants. I mean, Golding here gets a shot. They set it to the right side, and she just picks her poison and decides to go. Actually, that one went right through the seam, so she got a little bit of luck there. Nice, strong hit by Golding. That oh. ball is in. The linesman, Mark Eckert. He's on the money. Calls it in. Look, you see the Algonquin Thunder team walking in now, getting ready, starting to get ready for their 8 o'clock match against the host St. Clair College Saints. I know the uh, Saints women are really looking forward to this match. They haven't been to the OCAAs in a few years, have they? No, they haven't. I mean, and this is a great opportunity for them to be here. There's Yafu just banging the ball there. It's just so fun to watch her fly through that air. But St. Clair, yeah, having the and hosting here, it's, it's, it's exciting. Well, Yafu could be a gymnast, couldn't she, the way she contorts her body. Hey. And there's the contrast. O'Connor is just a classic hitter. Quick arm swing. Always got that body in the prime position, square to the net. She can go in either direction. She can go cross court. She can go down the line. There she is back to serve. That falls in again. Just carries on with what she has to offer as a volleyball player. I mean, those are great serves. She's a great blocker, just a great all-around player. She is personally responsible for 13 points <laughs> for this point in this match, Sean. The that block. was just awful. Deacon's Poot and Golden combining on that one. This is uh, pretty much what you don't want to do on a set. Yep. You push it, and then it just Hard goes the wrong way. Their hands on, looks like it was Golden. Yeah. Yep. Humber out in front, 8-7 for the first time in this third set. Wow. Will be the final set. Golding, big cross-court hit. Yeah, that's a quick transition going out to that right side. But what I like there was Miracle got dirty on that and uh, tried to get the ball up. Golding's another one who's got classic form, doesn't she? Yeah. In the hitting motion. Long by O'Connor, putting a little bit of extra mustard on that. It's 9-8, Humber. It's number 14. Alicia Orsborn goes back to serve, first-year player, Belleville, Ontario. Looks like coach uh, Dominique Dawes has been pretty successful keeping local talent at Loyalist. On my count, there's at least three Belleville players on the squad. Seems like Humber's taking a page right out of the Loyalist playbook. They're starting to get a little tricky out there. They're not going for all the power. They're actually starting to, to put some off speeds in there. Amanda Deacons Poot back to serve. Don't call her name a lot, do we, offensively, Sean, but she's such a solid defensive player, isn't she? It's a man, that violation from Yafu. Yeah. I mean, you got a player on any other team, Deacons Poot would be a starter and then be a contributor to the offense, but what do you do when you got Golding and Coleman and... Yeah, but what she does is she does the work in the trenches, the middle yes. blocking, and she gets her hands on a lot of blocks, and now she just coaxes that one over the net. Here's the FU. Oh, <laughs> you could sort of see that coming, couldn't you? Yeah, it's happened right in front of us, and you just see, I mean, she was salivating to get that ball. She just... Came yep. into that one with just the right amount of momentum and timing. Look, watch her just coming out of nowhere to get this. There she is, slowly and bang. Golding answers though, and the Humber Hawks have had an answer all night. And it's usually been Golding or O'Connor that has provided that answer. Golding herself now has nine points. Trailing only O'Connor who has 13. Just two girls there have almost scored just enough to a uh, uh, whole set themselves. Yes, they have. Yeah, Fu leading the uh, Lancers with nine of her own. Roll shot into the middle of the net. It's number 11. And this seems to be just... Rin Spence Coleman. The whole, the whole night has been just like this where you think that Lancers are out of this. No, they, they stay and they stick with them right there. Just can't seem to get their nose in front though, can they? Militech, nice set again. 
this time. Bernie Spence Coleman makes no mistake. And there, there's again a great example of a setter rewarding a hitter who just made a mistake. Probably nobody in the gym except her knows it's going back to the same person. Yeah, exactly, and then that's just trust, and that's what kind of uh, grows a team together, too. And usually, like just happened there, you catch the defense off guard because they're saying, oh, that girl made a mistake. They're not going back to her. They'll go to somebody else. And anybody that plays volleyball understands that that usually happens. Yes, exactly. Spence Coleman back to serve. Poor pass to start. Golden gets the free ball. They go back to her. Wow. Nice hit, nice controlled hit there. Dug by Orsborn. There's Yafu into the middle of the net. She didn't see him look prepared for that one. You see a lot of give and go coming from Humber, and this isn't traditional volleyball. And what we mean by give and go is usually the passer usually doesn't get the set, but we've saw it about four or five times in a row now. Shows great agility if you can pass the ball and get in position to hit especially at the speed this game is played nowadays. They'll attack, great set outside to O'Connor. She rattles it off the top of the block. That ball is hit out by Dossett. Unforced there there, and suddenly Humber's up 16-11, and that's the five-point warning ball. Coach Dominique Dawes calls timeout immediately, and that's probably wise because you don't want it to get any larger than this. We have the cumulative stats for the second set coming up, Sean. When you can see them starting to pull away, we were talking about how close that first set was, and then all of a sudden, second set comes around, and you see Humber just starting to pull an inch away with uh, 65 attacks to their 56, but they're scoring more, so they're going to have a higher hitting percentage. And then the, the errors seem to be pretty good, but then um, your digs is, uh, is the difference, and, and you got that transitioning. Humber digs the ball, transitions that into the offense, and, and nine times out of ten, that's going to get you that set win. Yeah, they lead in every category. You see there on the screen, four of the five, and they're tied in the fifth one. So there's a situation where the stats are reflecting their dominance so far in this match. And I think loyalists need to keep doing what they're doing. What they're throwing over what we call junk volleyball, and is getting Humber out of system. Humber's one of those teams that gets most of their work done when the setter's in the 2-3 spot. Nice, quick, easy offense. But as soon as you make them start to figure something out, that's where they're making the errors. You see Golding there, who's lived up to her Rookie of the Year uh, status. Certainly today, Brianna has six kills, one serving ace, and three digs. OCAA Rookie of the Year and First Team All-Star. That young lady, if she sticks with it, will have quite a future with the Humber <laughs> They're Hawks. really working there tonight. Roll shots handled by Humber. That's a double contact there. Boy, O'Connor still wanted to hit that, but <laughs> Militech mishandles that. I think everybody in the room knew it was double hit, but O'Connor didn't, she didn't care. <laughs> yeah, she figured she'd get a free swing out of it anyway. Yeah, that's called finishing the check, right? <laughs> Supposed to play the whistle. Oh. oh! Just missed. That is the toughest shot in women's volleyball right there on a right slide. Momentum swinging towards the net. All that momentum is pushing her way out there and she goes line. I mean, that's a tough shot. Yeah, missed by a foot. Coach Mark Eckert on the call. There's Gabby. She's dumped twice tonight and they've both been effective. That one, nobody got a hand on. No, I mean, that was one of those shots that Gabby usually sets. So that's a great shot from her. 13, back to serve. Allie Newman. That set's a bit tight by Miracle. She goes back this time. Oh, that block was all over that. Double, Double hit. contact. Man, O'Connor was right there, eh? Just pushing, waiting for it. Hands over, penetrating inside Lancer's side here. Well, look at her, you saw right a little she piece. Who was there to help her, just in case she didn't get her hands on it. Yeah. Some hungry defense right there. Allie Newman serving into the net. Catches the tape. 18-14 Hawks. They are up two sets to zero. Seven points away from closing out this match and moving on to the semifinals, which will take place tomorrow here at St. Clair College. But Loyalists will have something to say about that in the next few minutes. It's a very rare error from uh, O'Connor there on, on the pass. Hannah Dossett, number four, serving it to O'Connor. There's Dossett. Back again. Another good serve. <laughs> and no attack. Yeah, three she, for three. She's smiling. She knows she's going for the stats. 
She sees everybody else scoring, why can't she? Yeah, smart play. Oh, that nice, nice dunk. Nice strong push there with the left hand. Wonder if Gabby's left-handed. Tough play there. Alicia Orsburn can't handle it. 2015, and now it's real danger time for the Loyalist Lancers. As They're gonna the have to regroup here. Close in here in this third set. Could be a sweep. They'll attack to serve. Really good serve. Goes out to Yafu. She makes the roll shot. Militech playing defense first. Good rally here. Orsborn, strong hit. Handled by the Hawks. They go to Golding. Did not clear the net, according to head official Paul Higgins. That point goes to Loyalist. That, that could have been 16, a, That could have been a touch on that. I mean, but well, uh, he's think, right there. I think Humbert thought there was a touch. Sometimes, as an official, the toughest calls are the ones that are right in front of your eyes because it happens so quickly. Unforced error there. And this is what the Lancers do. They just keep coming and coming and coming. Showing a lot of moxie tonight. I think everybody expected them uh, to just roll over. They haven't. They fought hard. They had a great strategy tonight. Again, mishandled. They're going to get a free ball. Past the miracle to the middle. Boy, I think an aggressive hit there might have scored, Sean. Like that? There's an aggressive <laughs> hit, yeah. Boy, did I lead her into that one, eh? Holy cow. Nice little segue. Here we go. After the tip, they get a free ball, fortunately, really. Yep. And they go outside to the money player, Yafu, and oh. she says, bang. And that's what they're going to have to be aggressive if they're going to want to win the second set. Oh. Just over the net. Golding, just as aggressive, boy. That was the hardest swing we've seen from her tonight. Yeah, she's getting into her groove, and she's uh, going all muscle here. She sees the light at the end of the tunnel here. Golding at six foot one. Long arms, great volleyball body on her. O'Connor with the serve. Out to Yafu, roll shot. Oh, they're Call saying a touch. a touch on that. Again, handled by O'Connor. Golding, it's blocked. Right back to her. Right back to her. Oh. Wow, how did she manage to get that block up? <laughs> and the, the jump shot. Works. Big eruption from the Loyalist Lancers is Alicia Those are some Orsburg. Yeah. two great volleyball players and Yafu and Golding. Back and forth they go. Look at this. Well, that's the roll shot right there. Again, talking about that jump, that strategy shot, you know, where Humber just gets caught off guard. Yep, Orsburn makes the play, and then she comes out immediately. Serving substitution, Janessa Duffy from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan in her first year. In to serve for the Lancers. Tough Good serve as well. Yeah. Illatech goes to Golding. Handled by Mitchell to the middle. Illatech plays great defense again. Mitchell playing well in the back row. To Yafu. <laughs> cross court hit scores. And you're enjoying this now, aren't you, Sean? This is great volleyball. I love you have uh, just an unorthodox, unorthodox style versus a great style, and it works. Look and at it. that shot outside. Yahoo, just everything she's got into it. These are classic um, volleyball matches. You don't get to see that often where they're this good on different strategies. Yeah. Tournament this size doesn't happen without great sponsors, and uh, you can see how the local community has come together here in Windsor, Sean, as they always do for sporting events. I've always maintained Windsor's the best kept secret in Canada, especially when it comes to uh, community events such as this, presented by Bel Air Direct, and then look at all our local sponsors who've helped this to come about. And of course, there's a great crew here at St. Clair Collins in the athletic department, the student council, and the Student Athletic Association that all pitch in, and, and the OCAA, I know, was very, very happy to come back here to Windsor after the men's championships two years ago, weren't they? Well, they set a standard right there, our benchmark, and now the, we can see it happening again with the, the girls' provincial championships. What a wonderful facility as well. I mean, I don't think you can find a better one for volleyball in the province. Duffy to serve again. Good float serve. She's got the Cox on her heels. Mitchell with a great dig. She has to give up the free ball. Back to Golding. Oh, my. 
Big crossbar hit. Coach Wilkins loves it on the sideline. Golding. He doesn't yep. get that animated, but he did there. He did there. He's excited. That was a tough shot. Elizabeth Deacon's poop. Serve. Back to Yafu. Roll shot. <laughs> Good defense by the Hawks. They keep oh. it in play. Double contact on Militech. This is great volleyball. If you're a coach out there and you need to figure out a way to get a, a strategy here, if Gabby's got to be moving, she's going to make an error. So that's what you want to have happen. That's what Loyals is doing really well here. Yeah, full with the serve. To Golding. To the middle. Clamps is there. That ball is out. That was a great block by Emily Lenovo. That set up that point. 22 all. 22 all. So Loyalists will not go quietly. Yeah, through with the serve. Not the greatest of passes. Outside here, Roll shot is long. There's going to be a timeout soon from Humber for sure. Spence Coleman cannot get it to fall. No. Surprise there's no timeout for Coach Wilkins. This He's letting him work it run. out. Yep, this is a long run by the Lancers. Good serve again. Wilkins handles it in the middle. <laughs> and Lenovo with the block. Wilkins calls timeout. Might be 1.2 late. 24-22 Loyalists. I can Come tell you, that substitution with Janessa Duffy when she came in, it's just turned this team right around. Well, and she she served a couple of really harmless looking serves, but when they went over the net, they just died like a dead quail, didn't they? <laughs> it's like someone shot it out of the stands. Yeah, just exactly. a boot, just dropped. Someone in the, in the stands had a gun and shot the ball. And Duh. in both cases, both cases, it caused uh, Humber to scramble. You can see the Humber, uh, Humber bench. Well shot. Yeah, this is exciting ball. That's what you want to see. You got two different styles of volleyball, and you got one that's throwing over the junk, and it works well against Humber because Humber is one of those teams that's got to be structured. They got to be in yep. system, and they got to work harder than Loyals is working right now, and it's working for them. Well, we'll see if they can finish it off, folks. Uh, they want to extend this match. They're down two sets to zero. They've suddenly pulled in front 24-22. Let's go back to the action and see if uh, the Loyalist Lancers can... Stay alive. <laughs> well, there's an answer. Humber says we'll stay alive yeah. for the moment. Golding with emphasis. In systems right. pass and better check Golden. that spot on the floor for a hole there, Sean. She might have dented it. She goes back to serve. Handled by Lois to Lenovo. She's blocked. Duffy with the bump pass, yeah, flow. There it is again. There it is. <laughs> so look, at, look at the emotion. Look at the emotion yes. there on the part of the they Lions just, Lancers. I hope we get Duffy's reaction after this. If we, if it can run right out, that would be great because she rolled on the ground. She was so excited. First there's the block. Lenovo handles it. Duffy says, here, I'll take it. <laughs> into you, yeah, flow. She says, well, we'll roll it into the there, hole there. Now run out, run out. There <laughs> she is. There she's so excited. Yeah, that's great. There. That's a great reaction. I mean, they just took a set from a team that's 18 and 0, ranked second in the country, and that's why you have provincials. I think Pumper's only lost five sets all year. <laughs> this is the sixth. Yeah. So, and great, I'll great, great volleyball from the Loyalist Lancers, and we're extended to a fourth set here. So we're going to send you off to commercial now. Glad you're watching OCAA Volleyball Action on we-tv.ca. Hello, everyone. Joel Quenville here. I'd like to express my appreciation for the special opportunity to serve as a keynote speaker for the Westby Awards. It's an honor to be associated with an event that brings together the entire sports community of Windsor for one night while supporting so many great local causes. Spending time with all the athletes that help make Windsor such a great sports town is something I'm looking forward to. Tickets for the Westby Awards are available at Bob Reum Sports, 4275 Tecumseh Road East, and online at www.thewestbys.ca. Discounted group rates are also available. We'll see everybody in March. Manpower. That's our specialty. 
We use it to build infrastructure, like the Billion Dollar Parkway. That's real manpower in action. End to end over 1,000 strong, forming bridges, carving out tunnels, shaping roadways. Our manpower is in demand. Well-trained, highly skilled, tough as nails. We've got what it takes to build your career. A solid career for building a better future. Layuna, feel the power. Well, Sean, we'll put the uh, recent excitement of this young lady in perspective with this next replay as we watch the final point of the third set. Jessica Duffy playing a large part in that final point against the Humber Hawks. She was rolling all over the floor in excitement <laughs> as, they, as they won that set. Here it is, 25-23. Watch here as we play the whole point. Lenovo gets blocked. She picks it up calmly. Then Duffy steps in calmly and says, here, here, here we go, yeah, boom. She rolls it in the hole. And then here it is. And, and watch Duffy on the floor. I got an assist. I got an and, assist. And, 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 you might say, well, that's a little bit of an overreaction, but to put it in perspective, yeah. that is the fifth set that Humber has lost all year in 19 matches. The fifth set. So you can, cannot blame the Loyalist Lancers for being a little bit excited about becoming the fifth team to be able to do that. No, Duffy came into that game. She did her job. She put in some tough serves, and she finished the game out with an assist. So here we go. We'll see if they can... Maybe take the sixth set from the Humber Hawks. O'Connor with the roll shot. And you know, I think part of the reason that happened, for some reason, Humber didn't go to Devin O'Connor late in that second match. No, at they all. didn't. No, didn't they didn't. call her name out at all. And they've got to go to her. I mean, she's now got 14 points tonight on her own. Madago. That looked like uh, nice Humber just gave up on defense altogether. She's got a trademark on that, that shot to number one, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, it just comes across her body. Comes across her body and rolls it back around her. Actually, so long by Hannah Dawson. I think that touched Golding. She's laughing about it, but yeah, I think it kind of grazed her. Might have touched her, or maybe she's saying... She felt the wind on it? Could be, yes. <laughs> she was smiling about it. Militech with the serve, handled by Dossett. Over to Horsburn. Humber scrambles, but gives up a free ball. Yafu right over top of the block, pulls up the number one finger. Boy, she's a great player. I mean, that's usually where she just buries the ball, but she took some off there. You'd expect her to be absolutely exhausted <laughs> by this point, the way that Humber's been working her in the back row. Yeah and the offensive load she's had to carry, but certainly living it up to her first team all-star credentials. Big block there, Lena Hole and Orsborn. For the Lancers, put the double block up on Golding and not many blocks have been successful against that young lady tonight. Three, two. Lancers, suddenly full of confidence. To O'Connor. Big block. And look at Yapu. Says no. Yeah, she, she got right up there, penetrated right into Humber's side of the net. Here's Came. the replay. Watch this young lady just put the, the stick press. up in front of a very good hitter. Say no. Boom. Yep. No way. See if Militech goes back to her. She goes middle. That's <laughs> Doug. To Yapu. The wall shot. Really her only option. Militech runs hard to get it to Golding. Mishandled in the back row by Dawson. I tell you right now, Gabby Militech, she's running all over this court. The Lancers are doing a great job of keeping Humber out of system. And Humber knows they're in a match now. We'll see how they respond. Down 4-3, but leading two sets to one. The fourth set here. Lenovo is blocked, but they're in the net. They're calling Golding on the net. Golding says, no, not me. I might agree with her. I think that might have been the hitter in the net, to tell you the honest truth. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, know if we can see it on the replay, but... Came in, uh, you might be look. right. It might have been the hand. No, we're not going to show it. A little bit of content. Here, oh, here it Let's is. have a look. Now, I think it's the hand it's following push. through by the hitter. Nope. nope. <laughs> Referee was on it. Could have been Deacon's poot. 
Earning his money today. Yep. Outside. That is wide. Humber. This is turning into the most entertaining match so far in the tournament, and isn't it? The biggest surprise probably of the tournament, but I'm so glad we're calling this game. And after the first two sets, it was like, oh, hum, exactly what we expected. And now all of a sudden, we're getting tons of excitement here. Oh, 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 oh. by Mitchell. She stretches out. Yeah, Fu says, wow. Good volleyball here now. O'Connor with the roll shot. Loyalist answers the challenge. Yeah, Fu kind of telegraphed that one. Oh, Golding turned. That ball was still alive. Golding really had oh, no shot other than to come back inside the antenna. That's just got to be a heads up play from the Lancers on the block. 6 4, Loyalist. Their enthusiasm has woke up this crowd and woke up their bench. As they have crawled back into this match. Out to Yafu, a double block. She goes right <laughs> over it. Nice little campfire there, and Dave. She laughs about it. She's so happy. Yeah. Right Coach goes to talk to her. We Settle had, down. Was shot. There really wasn't there. They just got to see it. And then but but Humber know, stands you know, right around. Did you see that coming? I was ready to run out before and pick that up. <laughs> She didn't move the arm. She didn't no. make an arm swing out of it at all. Just pushes it yeah, in. She just sort of telegraphed it, but she gets so high, I think she's got the defense back in her heels. No attack goes middle. That, that was a great set. A lot of wow. trust there. But Allie I mean, Newman. Humber's got to work so hard for their points right now. I mean, that was a shot. She's running to the forward. Gabby gives a back set quick behind her on the run. Well, Allie Newman was right there to bury it. Oh, Yafu makes the dig. Roll shot by Lenovo. Back row to O'Connor. Yep. That was clinical. Didn't try to overextend herself. Just a nice, smooth hit. She just knew she had to put it in play. Middle attack. In the front row. Center for Humber. It's handled by Mitchell. They're going to have to give up a free ball. Mitchell does the job. Outside. Oh, oh my. Dig by Yafu. Dump is picked up. Back court to Yafu. <laughs> That's done by O'Connor. There's your two star players playing great defense. Oh. Oh, they need to get it over. That'll be four contact. Yeah. Great heads up volleyball here. The Humber bench erupts on that one. That was a big point. They've gotten it back to 7 7. So we see a lot of jousting to get the net. Just, yeah, too many touches there. Too many touches. Golding with the serve. Wow, good serve. <laughs> Lancer's doing everything on defense, aren't they? Connor handles that well. <laughs> Number 11, Green Spence Coleman. Her last two swings at the ball have been very aggressive. Yeah, she doesn't like losing, you can tell. It could be what the Hawks need is another hitter to come to the floor. And just like in anything, your other players that you've been using the whole game are tired. Yes. You've got to find other options. No doubt about it. Run of all with the serve. The slide shot. Oh, that could have been a double contact. Not called. Militech with a dump picked up for the first time tonight by the Lancers. Oh. Big block, big block right there. The Lancers getting touches everywhere. Everywhere they get a shot. A shot to Yafu, big swing, blocked. One touch again. Some great volleyball here. Into the net. Spence Coleman making the mistake. We're at 9 9. So to set the stage here, the Humber Hawks won the first two sets tonight in this match. And we're very excited. <laughs> wow. Mitchell with a great dig. Oh, Mitchell again. Watch this defensive effort by. Oh, the roll Mitchell. shot. The roll shot. Got oh. her hand under it, but can't get it up enough. What a big 
defensive play from the lip. So the Humber Hawks won the first two sets. The third set was won by Loyalist. 25-23 in exciting fashion. They came late like a freight train from behind to win it. And now they're going at it. Tooth and nail in this fourth set with one of the best teams in the country, the Humber it, Hawks. It's a slugfest. Newman with the serve. They oh, just woke it up. Good effort by Yafu. You can tell the Lancers, they, they feel as though they can actually win this game and they're playing like it. It's just, it's, just, it's great to see such good volleyball and such effort from all these ladies. 11-9 now, Hawks. Are they finally going to assert themselves on this real plucky Loyalist team? Badago, and that's mishandled in the back row by Spence Coleman. That transition ball coming from defense, set to the middle, catching Humber off guard. 13-12, oh, sorry, 11-10, my mistake. Getting ahead of myself a bit here. Not the type of error that the Loyalist coaching staff wants to see at this point. Hannah Dawson serves it right into the middle of the net. 12-10. And this is their Humber scoring line right here at the front. Madago with a smart hit out of the middle. She's been a silent killer tonight, Madago. She has. That is her seventh point of the night. She's second on the team to all-star Sarah Piana Yafu who has 15 points individually. O'Connor says here, give me the ball more. Yeah. I don't think they've gone to her enough. No. In this tight stretch. I think uh, she's scoring more points, and uh, I think Gabby Meltek is going to start just feeding her as she comes around. But she's in the backcourt now, so. She has 16 points, matching Yafu, point for point. There's Yafu. Can't get it to fall. O'Connor makes the dig to Golding. Into the middle of the net. And that's that's gonna be her being tired, Dave. I mean, look how many times they've set her for this whole match. Yep. They've gone to her much more in the in the third and fourth set than they have to O'Connor, and I don't think that's a strategy that uh, is intended. <laughs> and she just makes us that whole conversation mute. Yep. Look at this shot. With Everything she's got into it. Emphasis. And bam! Look at that snap. You can see it coming, wrapping around her arm, swinging underneath. Young ladies had a good night. Been a great book in to O'Connor. That was the right shot from Lancers. They just missed it. And they're going to think about it. As they fall behind 15 12. In this, we're going to take a look. Sean at the stats through three sets, cumulative stats. Well, you know, if we had to carry it all from what we talked about in the second set, Humber's still pulling away, and, and they're getting more attacks in there, uh, but they, they're making more errors than what the Loyalists are, are doing. And, uh, wow, look at that assist. I mean, Humber's got to work way more for their kills than, say, Loyalists are doing, and that's probably the difference in the game right now. Well, and yeah, look at the attacks. 100 attacks in the first three sets. And with a, that number of attacks, you would think Loyalists would have crumbled by this point, but they haven't. No, it, it, that, it's because they're they're playing the game that we've been talking right they're through. They're limiting their errors, aren't they? Yes, and, and the... the kind of shots that are coming from Loyals, they're unorthodox. They're, they're roll shots, they're tip shots, they're long and deep shots compared to Humber where they're, when they're in system, they just bang the ball. So, Amanda Deacon's boot back to serve, number nine for Humber. Puts it back into play. They go to Yafu, not unexpected there. Line of is blocked. Emmy Laveau, she thought that was uh, a net violation. 16-12, Humber. Looks like they're steadying the ship. Good serve by Deacon's Poot. To let them all again. Golding falls off and makes the play. 
Mitchell steps in. Good pick up by Dean. What a dig. And number 11, Spence Coleman. And Humber is playing with some enthusiasm here in the replay. That was a great dig by Deacon Spook, right on the dime to the Militech. And they're excited after that. I mean, they know that they're in a, in a fight here. Good serve. Militech kind of moving. Oh. Kind of double contact. And, uh, Humber not excited about that only because they felt as though there was a double hit from the Lancers on that Coach Wilkins better be careful. beginning of that rally. Yeah. Official. There's a little bit of history there. <laughs> Golding snaps at cross court. No, There's oh, a it touch. was touched. Yep. It was touched. Mitchell makes the pass. Oh, another one. No, a little tight. Golding says no, not happening. You get a set way too tight like that. That's what you don't want to do with a team like Humber because they're just so big. 18-13, Humber maintaining that five-point edge as they get closer to 25. Nice. Golding with the serve off the top tape makes it 19-13. And the momentum is creating with the luck here. here. Golding with the jump serve hits the top of the tape. Those are frustrating when you're on the defense. Dave. Here comes one of our favorite players, Janessa Duffy, subbing into the game. She was the good luck charm, wasn't she, in the uh, third set? Yep, and she just got a point <laughs> from the serve. Golding <laughs> serves it in the middle of the net. Maybe she is the answer. Yeah. The first year player from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Don't see many players from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Here in Ontario. The serve is long. Humber, five magic points away from this set. And the match victory. Tiafu, roll shot. Oh my. We talked about it earlier in that second set, that roll shot from the back court. It seems to have problems with Humber. The thing is, she's, she's telegraphing it. I can see it, you can see it, <laughs> right? Humber, for some reason, has not been able to see it. Carter. Yeah, this, this isn't a good position for the Lancers with O'Connor in the front court here. No, she's, a, she's played a great match, very quietly. She's played great defense in the back row. She's now got 17 points individually for the Hawks. Golding, outside to O'Connor. That's oh. all Duffy. With oh, no. It. Makes a great play, but he wasn't supported by her teammates. No, they let that fall, and, and that's something you don't want to see as you come into these last points. That it's, it's what's kept them in this game is getting those balls. Exactly. Number 13, Allie Newman, back to serve. Another good serve. Mitchell handles it. Outside. O'Connor turns that block in. Free ball given up by Duffy. Golding. Outside to O'Connor. Yep. Kind of knew that was going to happen. A kind of points to the floor says, give me the ball. She is ice out there. Yeah, she's crunch time. You notice they've gone to her three times in a row yeah. crunch time. That tells you the importance. She is waiting for it out there. There's that set. To this team. And bam. Bam. Yep. Yafu had nothing on that. Great player. Madago. On the net on the block, Deacon's poop. Again, that silent killer, Madago. She's even pulling Humber into the net because she scores a lot on that on that same shot. Unfortunately, it might be too little too late for Lawless as they find themselves trailing by seven. Doss, Doss it back to serve. There's oh, Connor again. And you notice when the match is on the line, it's been ding, 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 ding. The Militech. She knows. She's just, just giving it to her. Just yep. setting it out. And she don't said, be surprised if they don't give it to her on this uh, again, last well, point. You can see her saying, give me the ball. But Golding's in the front row with her now, so there might be a... Oh. 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 And that's it. 25-16. Hummer wins the third and deciding set here tonight. I tell you, Hummer had to work for it, though. He did. It was a game effort by the Loyola's Lancers, but... Uh, Hummer... On a kind of innocuous final point, Devin O'Connor celebrates with her teammates. She was money down the stretch. 
man, that uh, that was almost like an expression of like, wow, we, we, we actually did it. Because yeah. it wasn't a walkover, that's for sure. Great match, there you see the final scores. 25-21, 25-17, 23-25, and 25-16. The number one seed at Humber Hawks defeat a very game Loyalist Lancers squad. Three sets to one here tonight at St. Clair College. You can tell that the Loyalists, they had a, their strategy was we're going to give Humber different types of shots, make them work hard, keep them out of system, and, and it really worked for them. Yeah, it certainly did. The coach is shaking hands. Humber will go on to a championship semifinal tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, Loyalists will play in the consolation semifinals. As the two teams line up on the attack line, if we're going to find out who the players of the game are at this point. Uh, who do you take it from Humber? Could it be? If, I, if I, it was my choice, it would be Devin O'Connor from, from Humber. It's not my choice. I mean, that's a no-brainer right no there. That's no surprise for Loyalists. That's no surprise at all. So I could either go to Golding Sarah, or O'Connor. I would think so. Sierra, Sarah Piana Yafu is the player of the game for the Loyalist Lancers. For the Humber Hawks is going to be, I think, number 12 or number 10. And it seems like our camera guys our know camera something guy that we don't know. Our <laughs> camera guys are anticipating number 12. Yeah. Our sneaky Pete's. Well, and it showed in the last few points of the, uh, the, ma the match. Yep. There you go. Devin O'Connor. We're not as dumb as we look, Sean. <laughs> And, uh, and she really did deserve solid. it. She made it look easy. Yeah. She was solid all night, wasn't she? And uh, well deserved. We'll be bringing her over here for an interview in a couple of moments. So right now we're going to send it off to commercial. You're watching OCAA volleyball action on we-tv.ca. Hello everyone, Joel Quenville here. I'd like to express my appreciation for the special opportunity to serve as a keynote speaker for the Westby Awards. It's an honor to be associated with an event that brings together the entire sports community of Windsor for one night while supporting so many great local causes. Spending time with all the athletes that help make Windsor such a great sports town is something I'm looking forward to. Tickets for the Westby Awards are available at Bob Reams Sports, 4275 Tecumseh Road East, and online at www.thewestbees.ca. Discounted group rates are also available. We'll see everybody in March. Manpower, that's our specialty. We use it to build infrastructure, like the billion dollar parkway. That's real manpower in action. End to end over 1,000 strong, forming bridges, carving out tunnels, shaping roadways. Our manpower is in demand. Well-trained, highly skilled, tough as nails. We've got what it takes to build your career. A solid career for building a better future. Layuna, feel the power. Well, folks, welcome back to St. Clair College, this beautiful athletic complex. I have with me Coach Chris Wilkins from the Humber Hawks in his 20th year with the Hawks. And uh, Chris, you've got a great record in this tournament. I believe you're looking for your 10th championship in a row this weekend we are uh, but you got off to uh, uh i wouldn't say it's a rough start but you were surprised a little bit by a very competitive loyalist team weren't you yeah absolutely i think uh you know a lot of people said oh you know this might have been the match that would be sort of a um uh, kind of a, not an exciting one, I guess, and uh, certainly Loyalists proved tonight that, uh, you know, they're here for a reason. They deserve to be here. They certainly played well. They have a lot of good athletes, and their coaches over there did a good job preparing them, and uh, I was really impressed. You know, obviously for, you know, this time of year, you know, the girls and, and this, this type of atmosphere, you're always, you know, trying to make sure that you're ready, and I felt like my girls did a good job of sort of getting through the struggles, but I give a lot of credit to Loyalists, and certainly uh, Sarah, you know, that she just played phenomenal and the rest of the cast on that team just really made us work and uh, you know we're excited to go for our 10th but um, you know we got a lot of work to do for sure yeah you're talking about Sarah Yafu who had a great match for uh, Loyalists now I know you don't like to single out your girls all the time but who really stood out for you in, in your opinion oh uh, you know what uh, 
Uh, that, that ball just stood out almost yep. getting us there. But, uh, um, you know what, obviously Devin O'Connor for us. And, and you know, uh, she's just such a gamer for us. She's been big for us. Last year's going into nationals. Um, you know, it's it, it's just fun to watch her play. And then, you know, what was exciting for us, we got a few new people this year. And my number 10, Brianna Golding, she's an 18-year-old rookie on a team that's expected to win a national championship. And, you know, as a coach, you never know what you're going to get. You know, certainly coming into your first championship. And, boy, did she ever show up. Yeah. You know, she was a, she was a gamer for us as well. I noticed you talked about Devin O'Connor, your setter Gabby Villatech, a local Windsor product. Yes, she thank made no you, Windsor. Break down the stretch, mm -hmm. didn't she? She oh. went to Devon four times in a row when you yeah. needed to get the, the winning points to put the, that team away. Absolutely. You know what? And Gabby, uh, you know, I love her, and she just works so hard for this team. And and uh, you know, I uh, I'm, I'm glad Windsor let one out of the out of the city and come to Toronto. That's yeah. for sure because she's amazing. And you know what? Her and I had a little chat. And uh, you know, what? sometimes when you get to the end of the game like that or key points in the game, you go to who's getting it done. And you know, she yeah. knew who was getting it done, and and she uh, she took care of it so she sure. listened she did listen yeah. well coach congratulations great first start for you we look forward to uh, broadcasting your matches uh, over the next couple of days and good luck the rest great. of the tournament yeah i think you're in for an exciting one next year that's for sure great thank All you right. very much well folks uh that wraps up our third of four matches here tonight at uh, st Clair college uh we've had three very exciting volleyball matches to this point. Really no surprises. The favorites have won in the first three matches. But we're looking forward to a big, big crowd tonight at 8 o'clock when the local St. Clair College Saints women's team will take on the Algonquin Thunder from Ottawa, Ontario. We hope you'll join us here on we-tv.ca. There'll be an 8 o'clock start to that match. And we're so happy to bring OCAA volleyball action to you here on we-tv.ca. So join us again at 8 o'clock for the fourth and final game these quarterfinal matchups in the 2017 OCAA Volleyball Championships brought to you by Bel Air Direct. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at 8 o'clock.